Hi friends, Michelle here again from Digivangelism with the second in our series of how to jumpstart your email strategy for 2022. If you missed last week, we'll link it at the top. Last week we talked about how to start your list if you don't have one. This week we're going to talk about how to nurture that list and how to grow it organically with our best tips and practices. So let's get to it. We are here each and every Tuesday to help you get your message of hope, healing, and light to the online world. We share tips, trends, and practices on how to, help and how to do that. If you like what you hear, if this content is helpful to you, please subscribe below and stay in touch. This is the second of our four-part series intended to help you hit the ground running this year to build your email list, get your readers engaged, and comfortable in taking the next steps with your faith community or organization. This week, we're talking about how to nurture your list. Just like when communicating in person, people like to be acknowledged, seen, and heard. The same holds true in digital communication. That's why including a name in an email subject line is so important. Now, most email templates will allow you to add the receiver's first name as part of the subject line, provided that you have it. So when asking for email addresses in a pop-up form or a contact form on your website, this comment also prompt for the person's name. We highly recommend asking for first and last name separately. That way it's much easier to be able to separate the first name in a personal greeting. So let me show you what I mean. So here's your typical campaign screen in MailChimp. This is the tool that we use at Digivangelism. Your tool could be different, but the concepts are likely the same. So you have your two from subject and your content areas. So if we just pop into edit recipients, we'll see what options are in here. You choose your audience. This is the list that you're going to send your email to. Uh, personalize the to field. Now this is the to field that appears in the top of the, the email address, essentially not in the subject line or in the body. So we can pop that on, toggle that on, and it's asking us what tag we want to uh, display there. And so here's where having a separate first name and last name comes in handy, because you can just have a little more uh, personal touch there. So we'll choose a first name, save that off. Now the from line also gives you an opportunity to personalize. By default, uh, MailChimp will uh, put in your, your organization name, your church here. So you want to make it uh, more personal. So put your own name or whomever it's coming from. We'll save that off and subject line. So here's where we're going to use that uh, variable again, or a modifier or tag as a merge tag as MailChimp calls it in the subject line. So this is, says, hi, uh, that's the password there. So this says, hi, John. Have you forgotten how to relax? So this is the subject line of your email. A personal note to John. You can use emojis if you like, but don't overdo it. Here's some tips on best practices in here. Uh, make it short and sweet. I'll add a little emoji there. And you can also add a preview text and that appears after the subject line, usually across the top in the person's email. And that's fine to use that there if you, if you want a little bit more to say there. So we'll save that off. And then we're into the, the design of the whole content of your message. And that's a whole other video that we're not doing right now. So that's about it. Um, what I wanted to show you was how to, first, first of all, uh, use a name, just press upon you to use a name in, uh, in a subject line and to make it interesting as well. So let's talk about that for a few seconds. So rather than just, um, you know, saying January newsletter or upcoming events, try to create an interesting subject line, either from the lead article in the newsletter or highlight something particularly noteworthy about your upcoming events. So whatever you do, try real hard not to be clickbaity, which means using subject lines like, you'll never believe what happened to, or only open this if that has its place, but you know, don't overdo it. Now we're going to talk about nurture. The act of nurturing is caring and encouraging and looks to help something or someone to grow. As spiritual leaders, you likely nurture people every day. But how and why do you nurture an email list, an inanimate object like an email list? The email nurture sequence is a series of automated emails that are sent at scheduled interval intervals to a certain set of individuals with a specific goal in mind. In the business marketing world, they are typically used to get you to buy a product or service. That's its sole purpose. Each email is a bit different than the one before it, approaching the topic at a 
different angle or offering different benefits of the product or service. In the context of faith and ministry, you as leaders are called to love and to serve and to be in community with people. The holistic goal of your email list is to make connections and build relationships. It should not just be to invite people to events. Individual nurture, nurturing goals may be inviting, teaching, and connecting. No doubt you have put a lot of effort into the content you will be sharing in your emails. And surely you want to take care that your email subscribers stay on your list and remain engaged with your content and your community. So nurturing activity may look a little bit different across various communities, but the overall principles remain the same. You'd want to welcome new subscribers, automate communication for consistency, and segment the list into logical areas. Now, over the next couple weeks, we'll be talking about each of these. Let's talk about welcoming new subscribers. The first email that all new subscribers should receive should, it should be a warm welcome from a pastor or a staff member or a volunteer from the pastoral care team. Even though the sequence is automated, you can still give it that personal touch by using the first name of the receiver in the subject line and greeting, like we talked about before. But before asking anything of them, first tell them a bit about yourself and your community. Now, even though we caution against talking only about yourself on your website, this is a different medium, more personal and direct. And the person has, in essence, reached out to you first by joining your email list. You want to try to relate to them personally by opening up and maybe even being vulnerable. Be sure to direct them to your website for more information about your community, maybe that you haven't offered yet in the email series. And while there, encourage them to visit the Meet the Staff page to put faces to names. Now here's a, a tip for you. Link these pages directly in the body of your email and put only one link per line so the reader's not too confused by too much text on the same line. Next up, automate communication for consistency. Putting your emails on autopilot. Autopilot may sound like a complicated task, but it is well worth the effort. After all, you set it up once and it kicks in forever or until you stop it. So we're gonna show you now an example of a workflow for an email nurture sequence to welcome new subscribers to your list. Let's get to it. Example workflow for an email nurture sequence to welcome new subscribers to your list. When an email address is added to your list from the homepage of your website, you might tag this email as general website visitor, and they will receive the first in the series, the welcome new subscriber sequence, as we described above, and this should go out within a few hours of their subscribing. The second email, scheduled to be sent maybe two days later, is a follow-up message to the first, offering more detailed information about your community, or perhaps answering some frequently asked questions. The third email, sent maybe four to five days later, is an even more personal email and extends an invitation to the receiver to call you or contact you via email with any specific questions they might have. Now, offering some specific times for this call will let them know they are not bothering you and they are indeed welcome to call. When or if this person gets more involved in your community is the time to gather more data in order to tag their email address more specifically with their interests, but not before. People may not want to divulge too much information about themselves or their families right away, and that's okay. Your nurture sequence should be designed to give them time and space to get comfortable with you and build a relationship. In short, Nurture them and don't nag them. Now to wrap up, we're going to talk about tags. Creating and maintaining tags in your email list is useful as a targeting method. In other words, you focus your email distribution to be aligned with a specific tag. This is helpful for your entire list and not just new folks. These tags can take any form that makes sense for your community because you just make them up. A few examples would be exploring new churches. If they're new to the area and looking for a church home. Possible membership. Maybe you want to become a member. Education. They may be interested in joining in education, book, or Bible studies. But what if you're only using MailChimp? You don't know or track or care who is a member, so you can add a tag in these lists by passing along a tag from the sign-up form. In fact, email marketing services like these are built for just that, defining markets for more direct and effective email campaigns. For example, a visitor is browsing your website and lands on the I'm New Here page. This, this page lets them know what to expect when or if they visit in person or join an online event. Your email address pop-up can embed the tag Exploring New Churches in the contacts name when they're added to the list. 
This is so you know what page they lingered on and what may interest them. Now, be aware that this functionality is dependent on your website builder to embed a tag in your pop-up form. Most probably have it. Having contacts tagged allows you to focus your email communications instead of just sending everyone everything, which might get overwhelming and annoying. You are then able to select this tag as a selection criteria when sending out focused, targeted emails. You can define multiple tags to be assigned to your contacts, but one email address can include multiple tags. In a MailChimp, for example, you can only use up to five tags per automation sequence. Keep in mind, just because you can do a thing doesn't mean you should do a thing. Don't overwhelm yourself or your staff with too many tags that may be too narrowly defined. It may end up being an administrative nightmare that will be abandoned and useless. Nurture sequences are not just for welcoming new subscribers, as we'll see in next week's blog when we talk about engaging with your list. So we'll close with a cheesy metaphor. An email list is like a garden. You have to nurture it and pay attention to it if you want it to grow and yield beautiful results. So that's all for now. I hope this was helpful and brought you some good info, so stay in touch for the rest of the series. Subscribe below.